Hi, I'm Connie Sign. And I'm Jillian Dunn, and we are doing our presentation on zebra mussels. In this presentation, we will cover the invasion of zebra mussels. We will be looking at what an invasive species is, uh, where they came from, how they feed, uh, what they look like, animal and human impacts, and prevention practices. What is an invasive species? Invasive species is an alien species that will cause either economic, environmental, or human harm. In the long-term context, all aquatic species were originally invaders in the sense that they were the pioneer species that first occupied newly formed lakes and streams. Steps of an invasion. Species endemic somewhere on Earth Founder populations appear far from its native habitat. Species persist in the new location. This is an exotic species. Species spread from the original founder location. The species is now invasive. After species become invasive, there are two possible outcomes. The species can cause little to no effect, or species become an invading exotic nuisance. The invasion of the zebra mussel. Uh, the, the zebra mussel's real name is Dresnia polymorpha. That's its scientific name. It is the most prolific animal on the planet, which means that they can reproduce in great amounts successfully. The zebra mussel is a filter feeding bivalve that lives in fresh waters. Where they came from, uh, the, zebra mi the zebra mussels hitchhiked in ballasts. Uh, the zebra mussels are native to Eastern Europe. Scientists have deducted that they probably arrived through ships emptying their ballast water into lakes. Um, they were transported into lakes that had no natural predators, so their population increased. Uh, their native home is over towards Russia, the Caspian Sea, and the Black Sea. This diagram demonstrates how zebra mussels traveled through ballast water. The first step is a source port where ballast water is loaded. The second step is during the voyage where ballast tanks are full. The third step is a destination port where the ballast, where the boat is discharging the ballast water. The final step is during voyage and the ballast tanks are empty. Seven key pathways. Invasive species has seven key pathways for introduction or spread into foreign areas. These pathways include shipping, recreational boating, use of the live bait, aquarium water garden trade, live food fish, unauthorized introductions and transfers, canals and water diversions. Pass of zebra wrestles. The two main pathways are through shipping and recreational boating. Shipping mainly consists of large ocean-going vessels with ballast capability. Shipping takes place in Canada's offshore, nearshore, and inland waters. Zebra mussels attach to ship hauls and propellers or are found within the ballast water. Recreational boating consists of the in-water use and the overland transportation of powerboats, yachts, personal watercraft, sailboats, canoes, float planes, paddle boats, and charter boat vessels. These types of watercraft can spread zebra mussels to the lake, rivers, and upper reaches of tidal estuaries. They can attach to or become lodged on the hull motor, trailer, or equipment. And this is a little life cycle info. The female can release eggs at around 30 to 40,000 per year. Uh, the males release the sperm to fertilize the eggs at the same time the female releases theirs. It looks like a big puff in the water. The larvae are called veligers and can stay suspended in the water traveling with the current for three to four weeks. At that point, if they don't find a hard surface to attach to, they will die. Once secure, it will take one year for them to, be, to become sexually active and they only live for about four to five years. 
In this picture you can clearly see the, life si the uh, detailed life cycle. The top half is where they're all, um, the three to four weeks where they're suspended in the water, and the bottom half is where they've attached and are becoming adults. Here you can see um, a microscopic picture of one of the larvae. The description of the zebra mussel, um, it's white with black or brown stripes, um, hence the name zebra mussel. Sometimes these stripes can actually be seen in the flesh as well. They are between 1 to 45 millimeters in size, but when they are still young, they are microscopic and no bigger than a human hair. They cling to almost any surface with a byssus. This is a group of long, silky filaments that are strong and tough. Here you can see the, bright, the, the silky filaments that are called the byssus and a metric version of how big the zebra mussel is. Here is um, a tanker ship with zebra mussels covered all along the sides. The top right is a post that was submerged in water and it's completely encrusted with zebra mussels. Um, zebra mussels can grasp onto various surfaces including fake crayfish which you can see on the bottom picture. Here is the zebra mussel fil filter feeding through a siphon. I've circled those two little siphon tubes and they filter feed on algae. Here's a color picture showing the open siphon tubes. The top one is um, with it underwater, and the bottom one is it's been dried out a little bit on land. Animal impact. When zebra mussels eat, they retain all of the heavy metals they consume, making them dangerous for consumption. The one animal that has made an impact on them is the round gubby fish, also an invasive species but they love to eat zebra mussels. Zebra mussels ruin our beaches because uh, people have to wear footwear when going into the water. Um, otherwise your feet will be cut and anybody that's cut by a zebra mussel should receive a tetanus shot if they're not already up to date because the mud and dirt that surround them can contain bacteria. And although, that, although mussels are edible, they can retain toxins in their flesh, so it's best just to leave the zebra mussels out of your diet. On the bottom, you can see that people have already started to wear footgear in the water. And on the top is a picture representation of um, somebody's foot that's already been cut by zebra mussels. Prevention model. With the medical community's triumphs in creating a model to fight cancer, scientists believe that this model can be used for preventing the spread of dangerous invasive species. This model is broken down into five steps. Prevention, early detection, diagnosis, treatment options, and rehabilitation. Some pre prevention practices are washing the hulls and live wells on pleasure craft, um, purging your bilge pumps and ballasts before you reach port, uh, cleaning propellers and boat trailers because zebra mussels can cling to vegetation that has gotten trapped on them. Um, all this is important because you can um, stop the travel of the invasive species to another, um, another water. In some states, it's, uh, you will get a ticket if you don't actually clean properly. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for learning about the dreaded invasive zebra, zebra mussel. mussel.